Hi guys, it's Fernanda. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a little bit of an unplanned video. This video was inspired by a comment that I got on Instagram and that comment said, have you done a video on how you teach CKLA? CKLA is the phonics curriculum that I use. The person said, this will, this will be my second year teaching it and I'm really struggling on how scripted everything is. Even if you don't teach CKLA, this might come in handy or help or might be helpful for you if you do have a very scripted curriculum. I had a very scripted curriculum in kindergarten and now now and now I have one too. I've managed to still stick to what I'm supposed to be teaching while making it flow for me and my students and making my students excited for each phonics lesson. So coming to a point where I felt comfortable teaching CKLA and feel and feeling confident about it took like half of the school year to get there. The first semester of the school year was very trial and error. I tried many things, some things worked, some things didn't. And then it wasn't until the second semester that something just clicked. What I, what I really wanted from this curriculum was to make it more visual for the students. So because of that, I decided to make Google slide presentations for each lesson and I grouped them by week. So each week I would just pull up like, oh, unit six, week one, unit six, week two. And I was organized that way. This is very time consuming to make. It would take me hours in hours and there would be so many slides that would be in just a week's worth of lessons but i looked at it as a time investment because i have i i still have to do the first half of the year but i have the last half already done so when it comes to so when it comes to January, February, March, April, May, they're already done. So it can be a little bit overwhelming if you're going to start doing it this way, but I highly suggest thinking of it as a time investment. That's going to make your life easier in years to come if you stay in the same grade level. I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown of what the CK Lake curriculum looks like just on paper and like what you get as a teacher. And I'm going to show you and I'm going to talk about what I do and what I changed. So I'm going to go ahead and do a rundown of what the CK Lake tells you to do and I'm going to compare it to what I do and hopefully give you some ideas on what you could do with your scripted curriculum. So at a glance this lesson is focusing on CH and different ways to make that sound and different ways to spell that sound. So it's talking about CH and TCH. At first this curriculum would want the teacher to do spelling, reviewing the sound, reviewing the sounds, introducing spelling and alternatives, small group, reading, and take home materials. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I did. So for spelling, it's telling the teacher to read and write each spelling word and underline the focused letter, which this week is which this week is CH. It also tells the teacher to remind students that one of those words is a tricky word, which means it's the sight word. It is also telling the teacher to ask one or more students to use each word in a sentence. So now looking at how, how I'm still doing that, but I'm adding a little bit more visuals and other aspects into the lesson to, to make students a little bit more excited about learning and more engaged. So I started off my lesson with a Jack Hartman video on CH. Uh, we watched it once, just watching it, listening to this, listening to what he's saying, and then we watched it a second time, which we would actually do the movements that he's doing. Then I asked my students to, then I asked my students, then I asked my students to get their whiteboard, marker, and eraser, and come back to the carpet. That is when we would practice the spelling words, how it's set in the lesson. But instead of me just being the one that writes it on the board, we're all doing it together. Okay, so now we're moving on to reviewing the sound and it's supposed to take... So this is just t telling the kids little sound riddles. So for example, the first one is, this is a salty, crunchy snack made from potatoes and students are supposed to raise your hand and say chips, which, ha which has CH. I took, it a little, I took it a step further and I still had them use their whiteboards and they would write the word. So I had the riddle displayed on the board. I would give them a few seconds to think about the answer if they needed a little bit more help i would go ahead and put like sound boxes on the board if they needed that way they that way they had a little bit of a hint of how many letters they should be writing to make the word chip after i give them about 30 to 45 seconds then i would go ahead and show them the answer they would check their answer and they would like high five each other if they got it right um they would just be really excited about this it would my students honestly would be so excited about this i love doing this so we did that for every single sound riddle that CQLA provided for me, but I just tweaked it a little bit to make it better for my students. So the next part of the lesson was introducing um, the spelling alternatives. So CH has a spelling alternative of TCH. I did follow what the curriculum said, kind of, 
But then on top of that, I would show my students a video that I found on when to use CH and when to use TCH. I am gonna go ahead and put links to the videos that I used on this lesson on the description box below. So C, so CH and TCH were both sounds that we had just learned and that was added and I added that to a list of sounds that we had learned since the beginning of the school year. So even though this lesson did not call for me to review every single sound, I still did it because practice is good, repetition is good. So the way I did it is I had a sound review. So let me show you what it looks like. So I would have E as in B, and then we would say a few words that have double E. So it would be E as in B, sweet, tree, sheep, seed, sleep, ow as in ouch, out, noun, couch, cloud, mouth, ooh as in boo, spoon, loop, root, hoop. So we just go through the whole thing and it would maybe take a minute and a half tops. And I saw this helping my students a lot, especially with writing, when they were thinking like, oh, I don't know how to write the word noun. They, I would just remind them like, oh, well, what? Remember like, I was an ouch. And then they would remember what to let us make the out sound. Okay, so the next part of the lesson is a sound sort. So there's so there is a table with one, two, three, four, five different categories. So one is for S H C T C H C H, two syllable words and tricky words. So the words that are in this word search are all words that we're gonna see in the story that we're about to read right after this. Oh, that was loud. <laughs> right after this. So the curriculum just says to preview the spelling for the following words. That is about it. What I did instead is I had that same table with all the words at the bottom and we would read them as a class. We would try to decode them and then we would read them and then we would use them in a sentence. After we use them in a sentence, I would get like maybe like a handful of expo markers and, that, and students would raise their hand to put the word where it belonged and they're like a category that it belonged. I hope that makes sense. I would just toss the markers. They love that. That was a little extra thing. Let's say they wanted to do the word switched. That is a two syllable, that is a two syllable word. So they would write it under two syllable words and then they would cross it out to make sure that people know that that word is already taken. So we would do that until the all the words were run out. One thing that came out of this that I did not expect is, people, is my kids took it as a race. So they'd be like, oh, like sight words is winning. And they'd get really excited. Or they'd be like, oh no, like now they're tied. So they just kind of were rooting for a certain category to win. Um, I don't know, that was just something that my students did last year. Once they were all sorted, we'd read all of them again. There was, so there was something that I added to this lesson that wasn't necessarily on the lesson itself, but was in a past lesson and I thought my students needed a little bit more practice with. So this was a game that I called um, Two Corners and basically the and basically what my class would do is it would send up, I would say a question and I would be like, this is answer A, this is answer B, go pick your answer. And they would have 10 seconds to go to the right side. So this specific Two Corners game, was it Two Corners that I called it? Um, was for statements and questions. So. One side was statements, one side was questions. So I would read a phrase. So for example, the eggs will hatch soon. And that is obviously a statement. So my students would go to the statement side. If for some reason someone was at the question side, we would have a converse, we would have a discussion about why they picked that. And then we'd have someone from the other side saying why they picked it was a statement. And if they changed their mind, they could go to the other side. So like I said, that was not included in the lesson, but that was something that I just added just because my students needed a little bit more practice with that. So the next thing that this lesson calls for is vocabulary. So in the lesson, it just says to read the following vocabulary before reading the story. Allow students to ask questions to clarify meaning if necessary. So that is it. What I did instead, so I still did that, but I had visuals. So I had the word, so I had the vocabulary word, the definition. If I could include a video to clarify meaning, I would. I would also um, do something that I took from Happy Teacher's Palette on Instagram, and she does something like mirror, mirror, and then kids would be like on the wall, and I would say shop, and then they would say shop. A shop is a store, and then they'd be like, a shop is a store. I'm like, okay, teach, and then they would tell their partner what shop means. So we did that for every single vocabulary word. On this lesson, they, there was a word minted for vocabulary, which, which means to make coins by stamping metal. Now, that I feel like that is a very like abstract concept, especially for little ones. So I found the video on YouTube on how coins are made. We watched it and kids 
And after that, kids will be trying to use the word mente. So at this point, we are ready to read the story. And I know the curriculum calls for small groups to read the story in small groups, but I would do it whole group, laid on the board. They would also have their little readers that they wanted to read along in their readers. Um, and then after we were done whole group, if they thought they could do the next step of the lesson by themselves, they would go off and do it. I would tell certain students to stay behind or, or just say if you need a little bit extra help, stay with me and then we would read the story again in a small group and then do the next part together. Before, but before they went off on their own, so we would have discussion about the story. So I have some discussion slides. Um, at the top it says person with the long hair. That means that the person with the long hair in their partner groups is going to be the person that's going to be sharing the answer first. The question said who is the narrator? Um, person with the long hair would share this and then person with the short hair would share their answer. Their answer and they had a timer on the corner so we knew exactly how much time we had to discuss the answer. So we just go back and forth until we answered all the discussion questions. So that was probably a super long video on how I made just one lesson a a little bit more my own and it flowed better for me. Um, but now I just kind of want to talk about what are some of my go-to review games or learning games that I use with CPLA or just with the scripted curriculum in general. So on my Google Slides, I do have a file that's called Frequently Used Slides. That way I can just pull from them if I need to. So the first game I have is Spelling Word Splat. It can be spelling words, sounds, or you can even put punctuation marks to review grammar. So if I was reviewing spelling words, I would put the spelling words all around the board, have two fly swatters, two people would go up at the same time, and I would say a word, they would splat it. The person that did not get it right, or the one person that got their fly swatter on last, they would have to spell it for me, and then they would go take a seat, someone else would come up. Another version of two corners that I did is what sound do you hear? So do you hear, for example, for this one, do you hear OR or AR? I would say, let's say I said a fork, then they would walk to OR, side, the OR side. I also had this version in a stand up and sit down kind of version. And again, it's what sound do you hear, OR or AR? It's just a little something to get kids moving and engaged. My favorite one, sight word basketball. So I bought this little basketball thing that I put on my head and kids throw baskets at my head. I'll have a link down below. So CKLA does have tricky words, but we don't review them as much after they are done with the spelling test. So I did have um, Dol the Dolch first grade sight word list on my lesson. So if you look at my, and every slide would be a different word. The way that we would review them is we, I would go down the carpet spots and I'd be like, okay, little Susie, what word is this? And they would just say it. If their slide had a little basket in the corner, that means that if they got it right or they tried to read it, they would get a chance to shoot a basket up to my head. So we'd go through the entire Dolch sight word list like at least three to four times a week. Um, every ball that would land in my head would be a minute. Um, of something, so a minute of free time, a go noodle, or we'd go to recess a minute early. Um, it's really, it's kind of really hard to get the ball to land in, in the little basket, so. But it's motivating and my kids loved it. There's so much you can do with that little basketball hoop. I also have four corners. So this is very similar to two corners. So in this instance, every corner has a sound. So er, e, u, and magical e, so like so in long vowels for like magical E. So I would say the, the word verb and they would go to the corresponding corner. If they go to the wrong corner, you can have them sit down or just try again. It just depends on what you want to do. If you have them sit down, if they get it wrong, then that game is just, then people in that game are like dwindling down. It makes it a little bit more exciting. So it just depends on your class. I would use whiteboards a ton. That is a great and easy way to kind of make a lesson, kind of take a lesson to a different level. Ooh, my favorite, sticky ball. That is very, this one's very similar to splat, but I had two little suction balls instead. For sticky ball, I would only have two options instead of a lot of different options. So for example, for this sticky ball, we were identifying nouns and verbs. So I had one pink side that said noun and one yellow side that said a verb. So we are looking at Caitlin was surprised. We're looking at the word Caitlin. Is that a noun or a verb? I would ring a bell and as soon as the bell rang, the student, two students would 
throw the ball correct place which would be noun. If they got it right, they had to justify why it was right because I wanted to make sure that the students did not just throw just to throw and they did not guess. Another really fun game that I did for grammar was hot potato. So for this one was past, present, and future verbs hot potato. So we'd sit in the circle, pass up all around, and I would stop, play music. When the music stopped, whoever had the ball had to tell me whether the verb I'm about to tell them is future, is past, present, or future. Another version to do this is to pass around a basket, which in this case would be like verbs in it, with little sticky notes with verbs in it, and, and they would pull a verb if hot potato landed on them, and then they would have to say whether it was a past, present, or future verb. Another way is I just use my golden tickets. I have a golden ticket behavior management system, so they answered a, so that they answered a question, they got a golden ticket. Super easy. So those are my go-to things that I add to my CKLA lessons besides videos and stuff like that. But they, they're really simple to implement, but they make the lesson more engaging and less about the teacher and more about the students. So that is it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, please give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions regarding this video, please let me know in the comments below or send me a DM on Instagram. If you are new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you are notified every single time that I upload. And that's it. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.